International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. And geez, leave it to the colored guy. Couldn't shut up there and get the thing going there. What you call the, uh, the video there. Okay? <laughs> Jeez, Edith. Nice move there, Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bunker. <coughs> We're here at Black Bark Barbecue in San Francisco. I'm here with Bird, Judge Judy's bailiff, Petri. Petri, Petri Hawkins, Hawkins Bird. Bird. That's right. And there's a huge event in Oakland tomorrow, and you're an advocate for young black men, uh, teaching them to uh, your bridge the, the, uh, uh, the gap between the police communities and helping them to understand the community and bring, bringing the police departments into communities to uh, better uh, make things work better. Talk to us about that plan. It's called the OK Program. Uh, the, okay, so the, the OK program is a black male mentorship program that was started back in 1990 by uh, uh, then Deputy uh, Donald Norcross uh, up, in, up in Rancho Cordova, which is in uh, the Sacramento area. Um, Donald uh, uh, noticed that uh, a, an inordinate amount of young men were checking into the system but not checking out and that there was high rates of incarceration and homicide amongst our African-American youth, as well as a, a, a almost a 50% dropout rate. Um, he decided he wanted to do something about it, and so he founded the OK program. He started going to their schools, started talking to their teachers, and involving himself in their everyday lives, and uh, became the father figure that many of the young boys needed at that time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to great success. So. Uh, it's the OK program has been going on for uh, 25, over 25 years now, and uh, thousands of young men around the country have benefited from the vision of Donald Norcross and the OK program. OK program, our kids. Our kids. Our kids. Um, how did you get involved? Uh, what prompted you to uh, get involved? Was there something about you, your experience as a young boy, that you knew that you had to get involved in a program like this? Well, you know, coming up, um, uh, my father was, you know, sort of presently absent. My father was an uh, intravenous drug user and a, and a, and a drug dealer. Um, um, I'm not I'm not proud to say, but uh, but um, because of that relationship between he and I, um, I've always felt the need to uh, uh, be an asset to my community, and um, and so uh, for years I've I've, I've mentored. Uh, young African American males. Um, uh, I was speaking uh, at a, at an event for the hundred black men, and uh, Donald Norcross was at that event. He he had, he had, he brought uh, the OK Boys um, mm -hmm. at that time to the event. Well, one of them who heard me speak saw me at the Guitar Center. Um, few years later and he, he was talking to me he wanted to tell me how much he enjoyed my speech and what he said to me was um, that uh, he thought that Deputy Norcross and I had like-minded ideas about uh, uh, about our youth and he said man you should talk to Depp and I was like okay you know so he gave me the number I called uh, Donald Norcross we met for lunch one day uh, and we spent, we wound up spending five hours together. And during the time that we spent together, one of his OK uh, 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 kids um, ran into a situation with an officer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 he was in his vehicle, and and, and some situation happened. Uh, and he called Depp. He called he called he called Donald. And Donald said, Hey, Bird, if you don't mind, can we go and check this out? And we went out there to check out the situation. And Donald was able to put the situation to rest because he knew the officer who was involved with the incident, and he also knew the OK kid. So you know he was able to quell that situation, and it was an opportunity right then to see the OK program work. in action, to right. see it to see it work, uh, and. Uh, and he asked me later that day if I would consider being on his board. And I was like, 
this, I, I, I've seen it work, you know, and uh, I, I think I want to be part of this. And so uh, I, I became the uh, chairman of the of the national board for the OK program, and I've been doing that for about 10 years. And I understand it's become a, a national leadership model in helping to bring law, law enforcement and young uh, black uh, people, uh, black boys together to talk about how to uh, make things better. And as you oh, know, yeah. in San Francisco, a lot has been going on between the police and oh, yeah. uh, uh, communities, uh, young and old and young people. Right. And so uh, this is a time where this program is really, really in need. Uh, oh, yeah. What are some of the messages uh, you, you're going to bring at the event? There's a large event in Oakland, California right. tomorrow. Right. You're the uh, master of ceremonies. What yeah. are you going to talk about? It's, 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 well, tomorrow is basically uh, what, what, what they call it, kicking it in the park. Mm. Uh, and so we're going we're gonna to just have a picnic. You know, we're going to have uh, uh, games and, and uh, we're going to have a food giveaway. And fundamentally, it's to bring together the community. Uh, we're going to have officers out there. We're going to have uh, church folk out there. We're going to have business people out there. And, of course, we're going to have the kids out there. But we all want them to come together and to have fellowship, just, just to come together and let it be known that we're all human beings. So, you know, I already anticipate that, you know, they're going to have three-on-three -three basketball tournaments and, and uh, you know, it's going to be the officers out there playing with the kids. And this is something that we do every Saturday at our kick-it session. So this is just an expanded kick-it session where we're inviting more of the community to come in and experience uh, the OK program for themselves and the experience uh, having um, a fun time with the officers in their community. And and maybe once they see that the officers are human beings and the officers get out there and let their guard down and, and, and hang out with the community, everybody will realize that it's one community and that we all have a part to play in it mm -hmm. and that uh, we, we all have to be supportive of one another. That's what the OK philosophy is about. As uh, you worked at Family Court in New York, right? And tell us about an experience uh, that I've heard you talk of before okay. about uh, a young boy who came through court mm -hmm. and uh, was having some problems. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. talk about that experience that kind of helped you to push you along the road of knowing that you had to do something to help young black boys to do better in life. Okay. Well, it was I, I believe it was Christmas of '89. And um, uh, my wife, who was from out from California, was out here in California. I was I was in New York uh, by myself, and um, uh, it was it was one Friday evening that uh, uh, I was working in the foster care part, and a young man, a young nine-year-old man, <laughs> young nine-year-old man, a young nine-year-old boy <laughs> named Harry Webster came through, and. Uh, kind of interjected himself into my life. He was, he was, uh, he was up on a, on a juvenile delinquency charge. Uh, mm -hmm. There was no parent to take him home. Uh, they couldn't put him in, um, in, in a group home because he was too young, and they felt that uh, you know, they couldn't vouch for his safety with the older kids in there. And so they're scratching their heads trying to figure out what to do, and I, I very quickly realized that the only two black people that were standing in that courtroom was me and Harry. And uh, uh, I remember my partner said to me, you know what that kid needs? And I was like, what? He says, he needs you, man. You know? And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why I shouldn't take him home. So for the first time in family court history, I guess, uh, an officer took home uh, a, a young boy to foster care. And he stayed with me for three months. Uh, I got a chance to unite him. Uh, with uh, an older brother uh, who worked for Citibank and didn't know of Harry's existence. Mm. Uh, but through some research, uh, we found the older brother, and the older brother actually took Harry in, actually uh, took him in to foster care. And um, that the last I heard, Harry was doing relatively well. Doing well. Yep. Talk to us about the benefits of not only the young black boys doing better in learning, but for uh, police officers, how safer they can be when they, uh, I think you alluded to uh, a while ago, I heard you talking about back in the day when yeah. uh, police walked the beat and we knew each other, right. we could talk to each other. That's not happening now. Right. So there are benefits for them, too, that when things happen, they're not so quick. Right. to use uh, force, excessive force, right. and uh, 
and lethal force. Talk to us about the benefits for both. Well, when you feel part of the community uh, and you feel that the community is supporting you, you do a better job. I mean, the day that, a, that an officer puts on a uniform, um, he fundamentally puts on a bullseye. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows who he is, but he doesn't know who everybody else is. You know, he doesn't know who are the perpetrators or who are the potential perpetrators or who are the violent people, who are the, you know, the people who right. are, are, are looking out for the community and, and, you know. And so in order to get to know somebody, you have to live amongst them and you have to give them access to you and you have to have access to them, you know. Um, so the OK program sets about a situation where the officer becomes a mentor to the, to mm -hmm. the young boys in the community. Right. Well, where those young boys feel that the officer cares about them and cares about their everyday lives, they have a tendency to look out for him and they have a tendency to respect him. And the community, in turn, starts to trust the officer and that the officer has the best interests of the community at heart. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's a win-win-win situation. A win -win. Everybody winds up getting get, getting the benefit of it. The young the, the young people understand that the officers are human and that they are there uh, uh, for your protection and they're there to serve you and they're there because they care about you. The officer feels the support of the community and the community watching out for them, and the community feels safer sure, because absolutely. the officer is looking out for the community as a whole. Sure, you know. Well, I mean, once upon a time, we had that. We had officers who walked the beat, you know, and we knew their names, and they knew our names, mm -hmm. and they talked to the merchants, and they talked to your grandmother, sure. and they talked to your aunts, and, you know, uh, you know, before they, before they would bust you, you understand, they would go and tell your grandmother something, hey, listen, mm -hmm. you know, you better watch him because he's hanging out with the wrong element. You know, I just thought I'd come and let you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, when, that was when we were all, you know, we were all part of one community, right. you know. Well. You know, now they're in cars and they're separated and they feel threatened and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that will cause somebody to use lethal force mm -hmm. when it's not necessary to use lethal force, right. you know. I heard you comment once about the Internet and how uh, involved young people are and how sometimes that message is mixed and they kind of, uh, especially when there are go things going on between police and communities. Uh, talk to us about that message that sometimes they can kind of cross the line of thinking it's all their fault and we have done uh, absolutely nothing wrong, uh, but there is some responsibility sometimes in young people doing things they shouldn't do. And I'm not uh, 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 saying that if a police person, uh, police use excessive force, that that is... Well, well you know, it, how you react to something, you understand, you know, there's this, there's a thing called responsibility. Mm -hmm. And responsibility is the ability to respond any way you choose. So if an officer approaches you and says, hey, you know, put your hands up or throw yourself across that car or whatever the case may be, you have a couple of choices you can make. Now, if you've been watching the Internet and you've been watching TV and you've been, you know, you know, you may be taking your cues from, you know, from this rap <laughs> from video. From online, or, 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 right, or right. Online sure, and everything, sure, you know. Sure. But, but you have sure. to, you know, but young people have to realize that you have a responsibility in that interaction, you know. If you've done everything that you're supposed to do, if you complied with everything you're supposed to comply with, then you get to fight that battle, you know, if, if, if somebody abuses you or, or mistreats you or harms you, you know, and it, even if it happens to be a police officer, you're standing on righteousness. You're standing on the fact that you did what was right and you reacted in, in the right manner. But if you became belligerent, you know, well, I got my rights. You can't do that to me. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you know, now you're just exacerbating an already tenuous situation mm -hmm. where the officer's already hyped, you're already hyped, right, right. and the only thing that can usually come of that is that somebody is going to make a wrong move. And you know? one, one of you are going to lose. One of you is going to lose, and it's probably going to be you, <laughs> right, because this, right, this, right. this, this, this uh, officer is armed, he's, he's given a certain mm -hmm. amount of authority, sure. he's got the badge and the gun, sure. you know, and I'm not saying that gives him the ultimate Absolutely. power. You know, but you have to you have mm -hmm. to realize, you know, that this uh, that the, the, the saying is discretion is the better part of valor. Mm -hmm. OK. And so, you know, it's not a matter of how brave you are and stick your chest out. And, I, you know, you're mm -hmm. good. Shoot me. Shoot me. It's like, no, 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 no. That's mm -hmm. crazy. 
just comply with what you're being told to do. You know, and you will always have another avenue in which to, you know, let your beef be known. Mm -hmm. How are parents and uh, guardians involved in the OK program? Um, how, how are they involved? Well, well, it's not just the officer. The officer is the is the hub. He's at the core right. of the OK program. He's at the that's core the reason of, for of, the program. Right. He's he's at the core of any of any of the OK chapters. Because he because he can maneuver in 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 different in different mm -hmm. avenues. He can go into the school, mm -hmm. talk to the teacher. Right. He can go to uh, talk to the pastor. He can go and talk to the judge. He can go and talk to other officers on behalf of the of the young men. Mm -hmm. But he can't do it alone. So what we do is we solicit the help of black men in the community from all walks of life, from all businesses, from all areas of the community to come and volunteer their time. A little bit of time, not a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, this isn't, uh, you know, uh, an all day thing. Sisters, you know, sure. It's, it's, we, we ask them for, I, 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 I want to say it's, you know, maybe like an hour a week or, or, or something like that, you know. It's but not we much at them, all. We ask them to involve themselves sure. in the lives of the, of the, of the boys uh, by aligning themselves with the officer. So you have the officer, then you have the community of teammates, that's what we call them, who come alongside the officer and offer themselves as support with the officer to continue, you know, to be able to uh, mentor our young boys, you know. And even the, even the moms, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, in Indianapolis they started uh, uh, an, an, okay, an okay group of moms, you know. Uh, Ooh. You know, I, I think they call them MOOC. <laughs> Mom, moms of okay yeah and uh, and those mothers are are supportive you know they help out in the fundraising right. they help out uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know um, uh, offering food and, and 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 different things you know that which which helps support the men who support the okay support program, the okay program you know so yeah. it's so it's a community effort it's a it's a it's a it's a village effort mm -hmm. tell us about uh, <laughs> judge Judy the show how did you get the gig Okay, um, uh, I got, uh, uh, I was, I, as I said, I was an officer in Manhattan Family Court. Uh, uh, amongst the judges I worked with, one was Judge Judy Shineland. Um, I left there in 1990, moved out to California. Uh, I left law enforcement and started working as a high school counselor in Santa Clara. One day I'm reading the paper and I happened to read the gossip column and I read this name that I knew. Judy Shineland, that she had written a book called Don't Pee on My Leg and Tell Me It's Raining. I remember the book. And that they were, they were developing a TV show for her. And, uh, and so I just decided to write her a letter uh, at, to congratulate her. And I was kidding around at the end of the letter. And I said, hey, if you ever need a bailiff, I still look good in uniform. Well, she calls me about three weeks later, thanks me for the letter, and says, you might have been kidding, but... I'm serious. We need a bailiff. Uh, we tried it with a regular actor, and uh, it's an unscripted show. And I need somebody that knows how I operate and how I move. And she said, "As I recall, you're a little bit crazy." I said, "Well, I'm still a little bit crazy." She said, "Crazy well, recognizes crazy." Oh yeah, that's right. Game yeah. recognizes game. So I said, "Well, you know." So she said, "Well, if you're crazy enough to try this with me, I'll recommend you for the job." And uh, that's what she did. She recommended me for the job. Six months later, they flew me down to L.A., interviewed me. And uh, the day I left, they told me, they said, well, she likes you. You got yeah. the gig. I can and, certainly uh, see how you got the gig. Just having met you, uh, you're a real person. Yes. I, I don't want to patronize you on camera, but, uh, th and that works. Uh, you also, you're an actor. Yes. You sing. Yes, I do. Uh, you think that I'm going to leave that front part of on the cutting room floor, but we got you. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you got that. <laughs> so we're going to use that. You got that. Uh, okay. Uh, and what a, and a comedy. Uh, talk to us just a bit about the profanity that a lot of the young uh, uh, black boys use in, in, in music and comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard you allude at, uh, at one point to uh, the idea of uh, cayenne pepper. Okay. Uh, right. Anyway, lay it out uh, for us. Uh, I, I think of profanity as uh, as cayenne pepper. Okay, if you use a little bit of it, it can spice things up and it can make things so much tastier. You know, um, uh, if you use too much of it, you overpower 
uh, whatever it is that you were trying to cook. And, and 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 you you ruin the flavor of of you know all all the person can taste is the cayenne pepper. Mm-hmm. So my advice, you know, to young comedians or young, young rappers or you know, is that you know you 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 need to, you need to pull back. You know, there there are so many other words, there are so many other choices sure. of words that you can use that are not so offensive and that will help to promote whatever it is that you're trying to say, you know, and hopefully when you step to the mic, you have something to say. But I, I, I read something the other day that said, uh, if we overpaid teachers and underpaid rappers, we would have better wow. students and less <laughs> crappy music. I love it. So, so I, I think that, I think that we really, really have to, That's uh, a good one, yeah. we, we, we really, you know, our people are so wonderful and mm-hmm. we're so dignified. Yeah. You know, I, I love black people, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, but even even Richard Pryor, Red Fox, mm-hmm. you know, some of the comedians from back in the day who were considered, quote, unquote, blue comedians mm-hmm. who used profanity did so in such a manner mm-hmm. as to lightly sprinkle it so mm-hmm. that you would get the flavor, you would understand. And you would get the message, And you would get the too. message that right. they were trying You're to send out. You're absolutely right. You know? Yes, yes, you know, yes. As opposed yes. to like, oh, I got to cover my ear every other word, you know, or, mm-hmm. or you can't, you, you know, grandma can't sit and listen to it. You know, you can't sit and listen to it with kids around, you know. Yeah. I, I've never understood what's adult about foul language. Yeah. You know? Well, we're about to wrap, but mm. tell us a joke. <laughs> Come on, bird. Okay. You can think of one. Okay. Give us a joke. All right. You know what you get when you cross an elephant with a rhino? No. Elephino. <laughs> <laughs> and just a, a couple of notes. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, 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 you want some song. Well, you well know. come on. Yeah. Now, you, you're a ham. Uh, you, you okay, to, okay, on television, okay. you pretend you're not, but we know you are. Give us just, just uh, a little something. Da, 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 Rockets, moonshots, spin it on. The have not cool. <laughs> money, we make it, for we see it, you take it, oh, you make me want to holler, the way they do my life, hey, they make me want to holler, the way they do my life, this ain't living, this ain't living, no, no, baby, this ain't living, no, 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 that's it, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What is Who knew? <laughs> I just thought that I would sing for the man because he asked me to. What's the matter? You don't like Bill Cosby no more? You better watch yourself. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what is going to be your main message tomorrow, or not just tomorrow, but the message that you carry, uh, that you give to young black boys uh, that we hope at some point we'll all be men, but what is that one thing you want to drive home that you want to leave them with? I think I think I think we at the OK program, and I know myself personally, uh, would like to further the message of Donald Norcross, who says, "Listen, our boys need to know that we love them, mm-hmm. and once they understand that we love them, yes, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, they they, they say uh, they they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right. and so that's what I would like our boys to know more than anything that we love you, we care about you, and that your lives matter. But first, they have to matter to you. Okay, we're going to wrap. Um, we want to thank Black Bark and the barbecue. Enjoy the barbecue. I understand right. you're going to walk out of here with some, with some listen, food. Listen, I don't know who Black Bark is, okay? <laughs> but whoever he is, I want him to know I like your barbecue, okay? I'm getting ready to give me some because I'm hungry. I'm hungrier than a hobo with a toothache. I'm telling you right now, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry I can eat a bear. Okay, do they serve bear here? They got bear. <laughs> they got bear. I'm going to get me some right now. I want to thank Jim Hill, and I want to thank you very much. All right, brother. Thank you. Very much. Appreciate you. It's on this time, right? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Petri Hawkins Bird, uh, Officer Bird from Judge Judy, and this is my main man here. Donald North Cross. I was going to say Don Cornelius, but that wasn't going to work out. You know? <laughs> We're here at Verdee's Carter Park over here in Oakland. 
uh, for our first annual Kick It in the Park Kick it 16 in the park session. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a partnership between uh, OK Program, Axville Gospel Church, and Allen Temple Church. That's Brought right. all the people out today to have a good time with the police officers, local oh, officers. Man. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, right. that, that's powerful, that's, you know. That's that's invaluable, man. You know, with what's been going on around the country and everything, the, the division between uh, the communities and, the, and law enforcement, this is wonderful because it bridges that gap. It bridges the gap. I, I mentioned Axville Gospel and Allen Temple and OK program, but also the Oakland Police Department is also in partnership with us. That's right. Yeah. So, so we're just out here having a good time, man, just bringing the community together, man, to let everybody know that we're all human. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that uh, the relationship between police and the black community can get better if we put forth that effort, and that's what we're doing today. We got we got choirs out here singing today. We have got uh, free food. We got uh, uh, games going on. Games going on. Basketball uh, championship going on here. Yeah, yeah. We got these youngsters out here trying to beat the officers in the game of uh, what we call a knockout. So, well, actually, you know, I think the uh, officer won one game. Yeah, it's pretty even. And I think the boys, one of the boys, won the other game. So we're gonna have a tiebreaker here in a few minutes. What's beautiful is that we got we got them out here playing together, and they know that these officers. Uh, care about them and care about their community. Absolutely. Uh, and um, that again, that's invaluable. It's invaluable, you know, and, and the, the park is full of people today yeah. having a good time. All right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this outing. Thank you for the sun that's shining. Thank you for a beautiful day on today, but this is the day that you've made, and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it. We thank you so much for blessing us to come together. We especially for thank we thank you especially for these boys, our boys and the OK program that's doing such a mighty good job. Who's got their grades coming up? Who's got their behaviors coming up? Who's doing such a marvelous job? And we thank you for the police officers that are working with them and bringing them up, and the teammates that are working with them, and all that are coming together to help raise our boys. That they not go to jail, that they not be a part of the system, that they not be killed out here in the streets of Oakland. And Donald Trump won't have anything negative to say about Oakland anymore in the name of Jesus. Because we're going to be known as a city of God. Amen. Can you give him praise in the house? In the name of Jesus. This has to serve as an example of what can happen when the community comes together. All aspects of the community. Not just one part of the community, or uh, we had we have uh, part of the, the community mad at the other part of the community, and they're not sure why. And our children are standing there witnessing this and witnessing our attitude towards the police department. They're witnessing our attitude towards their teachers or towards the clergy, and 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 not getting it. And they grow up thinking that those folks are their enemies. We don't want that to happen. We want them to understand. That's why those officers were out there playing ball with them and, and, and they're continuing to uh, be in the OK program to show that they love their community and they love their people. Amen? Is it all right to love our people? Is it all right to love our people? I'm here with the founder of OK Program, Our Kids, and I have my younger brother here with me, Shamar, and I just want to first off say that we're thankful that such a program exists. Um, and specifically, I would like to ask you, as the older sister of a young teenage black male, um, how, how does this program impact women, um, you know, mothers, sisters, aunties, who have to have an influence on these young males that may not have a male influence in their home? Yeah, the OK Program has a tremendous impact on our women. Uh, I often say that that our women have done a tremendous job keeping the families together. Today, 72 or 73 percent of African American households are headed by single mothers. So the OK program empowered black men to work with black boys to transform our community. So we're here to take some of the load off of our women. You know, uh, I don't know how you how the women have done it all these years. To be honest with you, and I always tell the men it's time for us to step up. So this has a tremendous impact on you. You know, it, it, it gives you an opportunity to have someone in these boys' lives that they can relate to and identify with a black man and say, "Boy, I love you. I believe in you. I support you." Uh, you can make it in spite of all the challenges in your life because we've made it and we've been faced with the same challenge you've been faced with. So just having a man, whether it's a, the father or the biological father or not, it doesn't matter. We need black men to step up because these are our boys. That's why we call the program Our Kids. It's OK stands for Our Kids. 
And I have another question. So here at this event today, the turnout is great. You've got a lot of community support here. So talk a little bit about your community outreach um, with your program and just really getting that backbone, that support from the community to be able to put on these types of events for these young males. Yeah, the community is so important. You know, uh, one of the things that people don't uh, really get at first glance when they look at the OK program, because they look at it as a mentoring program for black boys, but it's really about the community. We couldn't do this without the community. We just recognize a lot of black men from the community that has stepped up to take on that challenge. And you know the relationship between the black community and police all around the country. It's a bad relationship. At worst, it's bad. So the OK program, we partnered with the local police department. The police department actually uh, assign officers full time to this program. So they pay them to work with black men and black boys full time. So uh, getting the community involved, working with the police, we begin to bridge that gap, to change the relationship so our young men can feel comfortable walking down the street. They know their officers. The officers know them. And if they run into an officer that's not being professional, they can always come to an officer that loves them, that's a part of this program, to walk them through what we need to do to make sure that that never happens again. So getting the community involved is, is so important. So it's more than just a mentoring program. This is a program about embracing the community and empowering the community to make changes. Absolutely. And that's what it's about, empowering the community and bridging that gap. So thank you so much for your time and thank you for speaking with my brother and I. You're welcome. Nice meeting you, young man. Okay, so Mayor, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for coming out to this event. Uh, tell me a little bit about how OK and events like this that bridge the gap and bring the community together affect your job as mayor. Oh, this kind of program, the OK program, is exactly why I came to be the mayor of Oakland. It's to lift up leaders in our community like Bishop Bob Jackson and really to lift up the young men. They are the leaders. They're the champions that have worked really hard to raise their GPA, to and and to engage with their community to be positive um, loving people we are so excited to honor them today and to lift up the hard work that they've done and to lift up the great mentors that have also helped guide our young men we all in this community have a role to play to bring out the brilliance the talent the incredible potential that is in every Oakland young person that is the thing that I care the most about as the mayor of Oakland so it's so great to be here to celebrate Celebrate that today and explain some of the ways that you see throughout the community um, the, the impact that OK and and other organizations like it have made in the in the city well we know that there is nothing more powerful than having a loving caring adult in your life and particularly not all young people have the blessing of a, a big family to take care of them we all can be the family to each other we are a great community here in Oakland we're a a loving community and so to reach out to all our young people and show them that we believe in them sometimes when they don't even believe in themselves is incredibly powerful and that's what the OK mentoring program does and the fact that it also creates a conversation and a relationship between young men and the police department in this city I gotta tell you as the head of the police department as the, the commander-in-chief <laughs> I want our police officers to form relationships with these young men. It's good on both sides because they also need to form those relationships and become trusted members of the communities that they serve. All right, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. All right, so I noticed you, Officer Morris. Morris. Yes. Uh, pleasure to meet you. So I noticed you're out here playing Connect Four, yes, right? Yes. You're beating all the kids at Connect yes. Four. Well, I'm teaching them though. So oh, you're teaching them. Yeah, yeah, I'm teaching them. You got some tricks up your sleeve. Well, it's about strategy. It's about thinking ahead, thinking ahead, not just playing for the moment. You got to think about five moves ahead, just like in life. So, teaching them strategies about how to win and how to win in life. So today, I brought my younger brother out here. He's 14, right? So as his older sister, um, what would you tell me, maybe some words of advice or encouragement that I can, you know, therefore transfer to him um, that you might tell some of your, your students that you mentor? Um, everybody's going to make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Just try not to make the same mistakes over and over again. Learn from your mistakes. Uh, we're, all gonna, we all, we're all your age at one time. So don't take things with your parents and your adults tell you. Just kind of listen, take heed, and and you know, uh, do do it. Do what you know is right, because you know it's always the right thing and the wrong thing to do. Just make sure you do everything right you, as possible you can. Choices. 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 And can you elaborate a little bit on yeah. that? Yeah. Cho so choices. So so my mindset with my kids 
let's say, let's, let's, let's think about a kid that's maybe not making the best choices and he's going a particular direction. Now my brief interaction, I've been in the unit for two years almost, but my brief interaction in those two years, if I can nudge him a few degrees off of the, the, the negative path that he's on, if I can nudge him for, away from poor choices and nudge him towards better choices, then, then that's a, that, for me that's a success. Now I recognize I may not see the fruit of that success, you know, in my lifetime or my, my tenure at the school, but I truly believe that making good choices, you're gonna get good co consequences. Life happens, outside influences come in, things will happen to you. But if you let those things keep you down, that's more of a reflection of your character than those influences outside of, you know, your sphere of, uh, of control. So. Your choices will uh, will will uh, express your character. Well, tell me a little bit how you're feeling out here today with the turnout and all the youth that is out here today. Tell me a little bit how you feel seeing this uh, community come together. You know, this is exciting, and it's always exciting whenever you see different factions of our community come together for one purpose, and that purpose is to make sure that we're all together in what we're trying to do for our kids and what we're trying to exemplify before them that in unity there's strength you know we don't have to be the same we have to be unified in our purpose okay so a word of encouragement or advice uh, that you would give to, to you know mothers sisters aunties to tell their young um, you know young boys and their family wow um, I would tell them um, I was raised by a single parent by my mother uh, she instilled in me many of the of the things that I believe in many of the uh, principles that I live by um, my advice to the mothers and the sisters and the aunts out there is don't try to do it alone you know if you can find a decent man a, 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 a dedicated man a committed man who can who can uh, help to train uh, your young men you know because uh, we, we we learn to be better swimmers by learning from better swimmers. We don't we don't take our swimming lessons from drowning men. Uh, and so my advice to them would be: don't give up, have faith, you know, um, and and it'll happen. It'll happen. Just keep just keep pushing. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for coming out here to this event today. We appreciate your time. I know you got to get running. So. My pleasure. Thank my pleasure. You so thank much. you, and thank y'all.